Hi everyone, I'm Rincy and this is Rincy Reads. Today I'm going to be doing a Friday Reads check-in, book update, life update, making sure everyone is staying relatively sane during this wild time that we're all living in. I hope everyone is staying relatively healthy and safe and social distancing well and washing their hands frequently and you know doing all that we can to try to minimize the impact that everything has. <laughs> I don't really know. I don't want to like dwell on it too much, but obviously like this is impacting everyone in different ways. And it does also have like a direct impact in what I'm going to be talking about in terms of books, because I'm very lucky in that my job can be completely remotely for the mo for the time being. And like I still have like book write stuff to work on and this stuff to work on. So I have plenty of things filling my day to help just sort of like fill the hours and keep me from you know, losing it or going stir crazy or anything like that. And I didn't think it would have as much of an impact as it is just because again, I might still have like all of my work hours and stuff like that. But I have finished a significant number of books in the past two weeks since I've been like self quarantining. Um, I've only left the house once in the past like two weeks. And that's fine with me. But yeah, I didn't think I would be reading as much as I am, but I am reading a lot. So I have a lot of books to talk about here. So I'm just going to kind of like jump right into it because yeah, there's a lot happening, a lot of reading happening at least in my house while I self-quarantine. One thing I do want to mention before I jump into the books though is that I've decided to become a bookshop.org affiliate and bookshop.org is a online website, um, like book selling website. The idea behind bookshop.org is that if you sign up for an account and order books through them, part of the proceeds from their sale will go to that independent bookstore. I was just noticing a lot of people talking about bookshop.org, especially while, you know, a lot of local businesses are not able to make sales in the way that they used to. And as someone who loves local independent bookstores, and as someone who has been trying to avoid Amazon as much as possible, and also with even if you do use Amazon, they're like deprioritizing shipping out books because they're more important or immediate needs that need to be fulfilled, um, which is completely understandable. But yeah, I just felt like bookshop.org was a good alternative for the affiliate program. I was previously with Book Depository, so I stopped including Book Depository links in my videos a little bit ago. I talked about this in a previous video. I've been like debating about whether or not to include affiliate links or not in general just because I don't know if they're really worth it but they do add up over time so yeah they'll be bookshop.org links from now on. They are a US only United States only website or shipping website so if you live in Canada or outside of the United States they don't ship outside of the US yet. They do say that they have plans to expand like probably to Canada first and then to other places but for now I'm fine if you don't use my affiliate links if it means you are spending books locally wherever you are. But yeah I just figured I want to support local businesses as much as I can as often as I can and this is a good way to do so. And also like if you are someone who has means and hasn't like you know lost their jobs or anything like that in this situation and you have a little bit of disposable income maybe throw your local indie some love. I've been buying up gift cards for some different Chicago land area bookstores just to help them during this time when they have to like physically close their doors and aren't able to make sales in the way they used to. So yes, PSA over, <laughs> now on to the books. Okay, so first I want to mention that I finished listening to Sadie by Courtney Summers. I talked about this in my last Friday Reads video. I will say that most of my opinions have stayed the same in the sense that I don't think that this audiobook is as great as everyone makes it out to be. But I will say that the book did win me over, the story did win me over by the end of it. It goes some really interesting and difficult places that they were hinting at towards the beginning of the book but then they like really went there at the end of the book and I really appreciated the book for that. Um, it talks about really difficult topics and really triggering topics so just a forewarning for that but the way that it was handled and the way that they talked about those things made me like the book more than I thought I was going to. So I ended up giving Sadie a three out of five stars. Again, I don't think the audiobook is necessarily the best performances, but you know, there were worse ways to be able to read books like that. I also finished reading 13 by Steve Cavanaugh. This is a courtroom thriller and it was like basically what kickstarted my reading ravenously two weeks sort of thing. <laughs> that was a weird phrasing, but basically like this is such a wild page turner that 
it really helped sort of kickstart me back into reading after having like a month-long reading slump. This is the fourth book in the Eddie Flynn series but you don't need to read any of the other books I don't think because I haven't read any of the other books. Um, This was sent to me by the publishers Flatiron Books. It wouldn't necessarily say like I loved it but like I said it's a good page turner so if you need something like that I would recommend this. You are following two different characters or the story is told from two different points of views. One of them is Eddie Flynn who is a lawyer who ends up getting hired to work on this really high profile case. It's this case of a celebrity, an actor, who is accused of murdering his wife who is also an actress and they're like secure, head of security. The two of them were found like dead in their bedroom and the celebrity actor obviously says he didn't do it. And then the other point of view that you're following is the serial killer who has decided that he's going to get himself onto the jury of this case. This is not like a great book. This is like the epitome of like an airport book or like a beach read. This is probably something that if you have a dad who likes thrillers they might like this. Um, it is pretty violent. I do want to give that warning. Um, there are scenes in here that were a little bit like disturbing but I guess like books with serial killers often have scenes like that. And there's a lot of things in here that require a suspension of disbelief but again if you just want something where you can kind of turn your brain off a little bit and will keep you turning the pages then I feel like this is the book to pick up. I also finished a Jackpot by Nick Stone. This is an advanced reader's copy of it so this isn't what the cover looks like but this is a contemporary young adult book. You're following this teenage girl named Rico who is in high school. She works at a local gas station and she's working on Christmas Eve when there is also this like big lottery drawing that is meant to take place the next day and so like you see a couple of the people that come in and buy lottery tickets and things like that and the next day when the lottery numbers are announced it becomes clear that their gas station was the gas station that sold the lottery tickets because if you aren't aware if you don't live in the United States if your like store sells the winning lottery tickets or one of the winning lottery tickets you get like some payout so her gas station sold it and so she narrows it down to the fact that there was this one elderly lady who bought lottery tickets. She bought two lottery tickets and she gave one to Rico and then kept one for herself. Rico obviously didn't get the winning ticket but she is like 99% sure that the elderly woman has the winning ticket and so the fact that she hasn't come forward in a number of weeks has her like slightly concerned and so Rico decides that she's going to try to find this elderly woman and it's not like necessarily clear while you're reading this book what Rico's motives are. Like while I was reading the book I kept wondering like does Rico plan on stealing the lottery ticket from this elderly woman? Does she plan on like telling her about this and then hoping she gets some sort of cut? Because Rico does live in a family that is a sing she has a single mom. They're stretched for cash hence why Rico is working at the local gas station things like that and so they could really use this money to just take care of basic needs. In order to accomplish all these goals. She has to convince this other boy at her high school named Zan who is like this rich heir to help her out because he's really good at like hacking into systems and things like that and so she needs his help to like figure out who this old lady was and where she went and how to find them and things like that and then off on an adventure they go. So this is my first time reading Nick Stone and I've heard a lot of people say how much they really enjoy her books. I will say I like this book. I didn't love it. This was another sort of like three star read for me and it was like a fun contemporary read but there was just like a lot of things that felt like they were rushed or didn't really feel realistic. All Obviously like this whole scenario was kind of absurd and like the fact that like they were able to get as far as they did in their like hunt requires a little bit of suspension of disbelief again but I really like Rico a lot as a character and I love the way that they discuss things like class and money. Rico's family isn't like super poor but they're obviously not rich either. They're probably like middle lower middle class family. They talk about things like budgeting and dealing with college and just being able to get basic things that would make them happy. Rico has a little brother and so she like splurges on him for Christmas and Rico's mom gets a little bit upset because she's like we could have used that money to pay some bills and things like that. So there are a lot of really great discussions that happen in here but in terms of the whole like finding the lottery ticket search wasn't super into any of that for <laughs> whatever reason. So yeah I probably will check out more Nick Stone because I want to have another book of hers <laughs> but also because I do again like the way she talks about things like class and race and money and stuff like that and so that is really what I enjoyed in this book and I imagine she discusses it also in her other books. All right next I have The Confessions of Franny Langton by Sarah Collins. I'm not going to talk too much about this one because I actually posted a full review of this book 
on my channel last Friday so you can check that out for my full thoughts but this is one that I listened to on audiobook and the audiobook is actually really good so if you are an audiobook book person and you have been interested in checking this out I recommend it but yeah I gave this one like a three and a half stars there were a lot of things in here that I really enjoyed and some things I didn't really enjoy but again you can watch my book review to find out what I mean by all of that all right next I have the a Ayasawa murders by Riko Onda and this is translated from the Japanese by Allison Watts this is a book I read for Red or Dead we decided to do an episode which is out today and if you aren't aware Red or Dead is the podcast that I co-host for Book Riot there's always a link to that down in the description in case you want to check it out for the episode that is released today Friday we decided we wanted to talk about small presses and so this book was just published in January by a pub small press called Bitter Lemon Press. So I've had my eye on this book because it was described in some places as being like a Japanese whodunit. And as someone who loves Kiko Hikoshino and he does like Japanese whodunits so well, I was like, yeah, I will take another one. But this isn't really a Japanese whodunit. Um, so the way the story is set up, there is this family called the Ayosawa family. They live in this coastal town in Japan. They're really well loved in this town. They are pretty wealthy, things like that. And they are hosting this party, this birthday party, because their grandmother, I think her son and then her grandson all have birthdays right around each other. Like I think either on the same day um, or in like the same week, something along those lines. So they're throwing a huge birthday party, like everyone in the town is invited, things like that. At this party, someone ends up lacing some of the drinks with cyanide and people who drink the drink obviously end up dying. There's only one person at the party who doesn't drink the drink and that's a local housekeeper. And then there's one person from the family, Hisako, who is this blind daughter. But the way the story is set up is that it's like, reading a series of interviews of people who were like connected to this event in some sort of way. There is like a woman who wrote a book about the Ayosawa murders and was like one of the people who was like supposed to be at the party and like when she shows up when she was a kid um, they had like left the house really briefly and then like returned to the house and when they returned everyone was like on the floor already having drink drink drunk the beverage. Wow having a hard time with those words today. And then there's like an interview with like the housekeeper who survives daughter or children. So there are all of these different interviews that you're basically reading transcripts of almost. And it's not entirely clear what this book is meant to be doing to at least a Western eye. Um, if you're someone who reads a lot of mysteries that are focused in like the US or with the Western world and things like that. This is completely different. Um, the way I described it in the Red or Dead podcast is that it's less of a whodunit and more of a why done it uh, because you find out pretty early on the person that everyone really believes is behind the murders. When I was reading this book originally I thought that that was just like a red herring but it's not really and it becomes more about like why and how that person accomplished this. I imagine that this book is not going to appeal to a lot of people even for me it was like a three out of five stars because you don't really connect to it and you spend a lot of time just really wondering what the heck is going on and even like a lot of the interviews like a lot of the transcripts there are significant portions of it that are not relevant uh, but it's like written in a way that people normally talk so you're getting a lot of information that isn't relevant and I have a feeling that's going to frustrate a lot of people but if you are into reading something that is completely different from anything else that you'll read especially if you read a lot of mysteries I definitely recommend checking this book out. All right, next I have Macy Dobbs by Jacqueline Winspear. This is the first book in the Macy Dobbs series and this is my first time reading obviously anything from the series and anything by Jacqueline Winspear. This is a historical mystery series that is set like right after World War One. You're following this character named Macy Dobbs who ends up sending setting up basically her own like private investigation business but she doesn't really call it that. This was like such an interesting read to me. The way I described it on Goodreads is that this book felt like a weighted blanket for my brain because there was such a like ease and calm that came over me after I started reading this book which is like exactly what I needed because you know the world but I don't necessarily know like if I love this book. So the way this story is set up is in like three sections one of them in like modern whatever modern is like 1920s Maisie Dobbs. The second section is entirely a flashback about Maisie Dobbs's life growing up and 
her life through World War One. She ended up becoming a nurse um, and fighting in the war and like basically enlisting as a nurse before she was even like 18. And then you like come back to modern day Macy Dobbs, 1920s Macy Dobbs, and you follow her as like the case itself actually picks up and gets going and resolves. So I've seen a lot of people rate this low on Goodreads because like that entire middle section is a complete divergent <laughs> and the entire first section there's barely any setup and barely any like mystery given to you it's not until the third part that it actually feels like a mystery book so again I see that frustrating a lot of people and I completely understand why it frustrated a lot of people but for me I just really like historical fiction books um, and specifically historical mysteries and I really like books set during World War One. I. I thought that the middle section when I first started it and I realized that it was more than like a chapter or two, when I realized it was a whole section, I thought it was going to annoy me. But that section basically turned into, for me, a mashup of Downton Abbey and Call the Midwife, both of which are things that I've enjoyed in the past. So yeah, there's very much like an upstairs downstairs aspect to that story. And then there's also like a Call the Midwife type of thing because she eventually becomes a nurse and enlists in World War One and things like that. And so I didn't hate it as much as I thought I was going to. And the mystery itself was like pretty obvious. But again, historical mysteries are kind of comfort reads for me. So I have a feeling I'm going to be reading more of these books these days because I need some comfort reads. All right, next I listened to the audiobook of The Hand on the Wall by Maureen Johnson, which is the third book in the Truly Devious series. I mentioned earlier this year that I read the second book in this series, The Vanishing Stare. In the video where I talked about that, I basically just said like, I'm not in love with this series and I don't think it should have been a series and I stand by that. Um, there is like so little that happens in books two and three that it like blows my mind that this was more than a duology. I honestly don't think it should have been more than one book or they should have split these plot lines a little bit differently and just done like one of these mysteries in one book and different type extension of that mystery in a different book and all of these like cliffhangers and whatever were so unnecessary um so I gave it a three out of five stars because again it's like fine it's not offensive but it's fine I think someone commented on a previous video saying that there's going to be more books in the series and I have not decided yet whether or not I'm going to continue on with it just because if it continues to be like this where it takes like three books to solve a single mystery I'm not gonna be into it. I realized that I don't like mystery series like this like I need my mysteries to be wrapped up in one book that's why I read mysteries. If you want to have things that sort of like go over multiple storylines that's fine but you need to have some things wrap up in a single book and stop with these dumb unnecessary holds and like stretches of information that don't need to be stretched out. Yeah like by the end of this series I wasn't even that surprised by what was happening. Nothing really felt like a twist and yeah I just was reading it just to see how it all ended if anything was different than what I thought it was going to be. So yeah if you aren't aware this is a young adult mystery series clearly I'm not recommending it very highly because <laughs> I didn't enjoy it very much but I know a lot of people do really love these books and I do like the way that Maureen Johnson writes that's the thing that really frustrates me but again I don't think that these books should be series like this. I'm fine with mystery series obviously but it needs to be like a more traditional mystery series where you're just following the same characters over periods of time and they're dealing with different circumstances, not three book series that deal with like one extended mystery over the course of three books. All right, and the final book that I have to talk about today is Hearts Unbroken by Cynthia Latish Smith. Um, this is a contemporary young adult book that came out in 2018, I think. Yeah, November of 2018, and I got sent an advanced copy of it. So as you can tell, I have been working through my physical TBR during this time and I'm proud of myself for it. But anyways, this is a book that is set in Kansas. You are following this character named Louise, or Lou, who is part of the Muscogee Nation. Um, she's of native descent. This story starts off with her breaking up with her very popular football boyfriend because he makes some like disrespectful comments about native people like to her and then like the school year starts and she joins the school paper and she ends up getting a crush on one of the boys there and so it's about her like learning how to be a reporter but also dealing with sort of the evasive native imagery that is used in disrespectful ways throughout the world also the high school that she's going to is putting on a production of the wizard of oz and her freshman brother tries out for it and he gets cast as long along with a black girl gets cast as Dorothy, the brother gets cast as the Tin Man, and I believe there's one other like non-white 
person who gets cast in this play and it causes sort of this uproar uproar in this town and people are like they should have done more like traditional casting there are air quotes around that and things like that so it's about sort of like dealing with these racial tensions happening in this high school and like also like just normal teenage stuff so this is a young adult book that feels a little bit on the younger side uh, just because some of the way things are written in here just felt really immature but that also might have just been like the way the characters are written. Um, I do really like how the author tackles all of the things about race and racial tension. I think that it's done really realistically and this would be like a great book for teenagers to read and to sort of like discuss like the topics that come up in here and how like they would feel in those situations and why certain things are right and wrong and things like that. I'm also a sucker for anything that includes journalism and being able to watch these uh, teenagers work on their high school paper gave me a lot of nostalgia. But overall this is not like a great young adult book. It's a good young adult book but it's not a great young adult book. The romance in here feels really really forced. I couldn't like feel any connection between these two characters at all and it felt like really heavy-handed in my opinion or it feels like it moves really fast too but again maybe that's just high school so yeah I don't know it's I'm not mad that I read it I would recommend it if you're looking for more authors who identify as native or if you're looking for like a good young adult book that explores like complicated topics about race in a really more nuanced way then I would recommend this but like as a general contemporary young adult book it was like a three star read for me. Oh boy those were a lot of books um so <laughs> that's everything I've read in the past two weeks which has been a lot. Let me know down in the comments below if you've read any of these books or if you want to talk to me about any of these books. Depending on how my reading continues to go over the next couple of weeks as I am self-quarantining, I may just do like weekly check-ins with the books that I've read because I don't know if I'm going to want to do like individual book reviews and fall behind on the books that I'm reading. Maybe I'll do more videos but it seems unlikely at the, this point. I, we'll figure it out. That's how everyone is doing everything these days. We'll figure it out as we go. So let me know down in the comments below if you have any comments or questions on any of the books that I talked about here. Again, links to everything will be down in the description below. So definitely check out those if you are interested. So yeah, that's all I have for now. And thanks for watching.